here at the Guthrie Treatment Plant, what we're doing is building a new wet, wet weather treatment facility, and it is to be used as part of an overall plan to reduce, eliminate sanitary sewer overflows upstream of the plant and in other watersheds of our service area. During dry weather flows, normally this plant sees about 20 million gallons a day of flow from the Pond Creek and the Mill Creek watersheds. All of the sewers that serve this plant are separate sanitary sewers. We also have a portion of Jefferson County that's on a combined sewer system. And during wet weather flows, that, that area goes to the Morris Foreman treatment plant. During wet weather events upstream and in Jefferson County, the flow will be monitored and when it reaches a point where Morris Foreman has maximized the amount of uh, flow that it can treat, the flow will, additional flow will be diverted to the Derrick R. Guthrie plant to treat and to, to treat those peak flows. When, when the Guthrie expansion is complete, it will be the second largest regional treatment plant in our system, Morris Foreman being the largest. This plant and its expansion for all of the, uh, the overflow from sewers is going to benefit everyone in this community. I don't think there's anyone in Louisville Metro who won't see the benefit either directly in the watershed itself or in uh, neighboring watersheds around Pond Creek. So instead of taking about 100 million gallons a day during wet weather events, this plant, when complete, will be able to take up to 300 million gallons a day of flow and to be able to treat it and then release it to the Ohio River rather than have it overflow untreated into the streams of Jefferson County. We also have in Jefferson County and areas that are separate sanitary sewer systems that that flow into our combined system. So one of our goals was to reduce sanitary sewer overflows and we wanted to try to maximize the separation between the separate system and the combined system. And so with um, that in mind, we came up with a strategy to increase interceptors and eliminate pump stations that were, were not large enough to accommodate all the wet weather flow. And so our strategy was to build larger interceptors and at, and at a point in that system, at the low point of that system, to divert just the wet weather flow to this plant in order to, to better treat it and to avoid or eliminate a sanitary sewer overflow upstream. This project represents the second largest capital expenditure in MSD's history. And as a major component of our federal consent decree to clean our streams, creeks, eliminate sanitary sewer overflows, and minimize combined sewer overflows. So by completing the upgrade and the expansion of this plant, at some point we're going to greatly reduce those overflows and greatly improve water quality. We have a 120 inch diameter interceptor that comes into the plant that brings the raw wastewater in. The first thing that we have is we screen the wastewater and then pump it up into the treatment plant for further treatment. With this project, we are constructing a new influent pump station. We're also constructing a new screening facility that will allow us to treat not only the daily uh, average flows during dry weather, but also be able to handle the peaks of up to 300 million gallons a day. Once fl flow is screened at the plant, dry or wet weather, we will then separate it. If it goes over 200 million gallons a day, that additional flow will go to a detention basin where we'll hold on to that diluted wastewater, hold back that peak flow until the plant's ready to accept it. So we're building a short-term detention basin and also a, a large equalization basin that will hold a, be able to hold up to about 19 million gallons. At a time when the flows drop in the plant, we'll, we'll then open the gates and allow that equalization basin to drain back into the plant for further treatment. We're also renovating an existing pump station to make it for the wet weather 
pump station to be able to go from the wet weather station up to the short-term detention and then flow by gravity into the equalization basin. Additional construction includes, uh, we're doubling the capacity of our grit basins that, that does a preliminary treatment of the wastewater. We are adding another aeration basins to, do, to increase the, the ability to biologically treat the wastewater and then um, six new clarifiers that will allow us to separate out the solids from the, the liquid phase. Once the wastewater goes through the clarifiers, it will then be taken to the chlorine contact tank for disinfection and then dechlorinated and then released to the Ohio River. This project uh, will last a total of about two years until completion. It's one of a great many across Metro Louisville and uh, by 2024 we will have hoped to have spent in the area of 850 million dollars to meet all of our clean water goals under the federal consent decree and I think that is something we need to be proud of because the majority of federal consent decrees with cities of Louisville or similar size are in the billions of dollars and our community had the foresight 10, 15 years ago to start eliminating septic tanks, package treatment plants, and we built over a thousand miles of sewer. So a lot of what's built into consent decrees around the country today, we've already completed. What we're doing now is what I would consider the last phases of upgrading the infrastructure for, for sanitary and combined sewer systems. And I think by the end of the next decade, Louisville's gonna be a leader, not only our consent decree being one of the least expensive, but we're already being recognized nationally as a green infrastructure leader. EPA uh, has used us as an example of how we can use green infrastructure to minimize a lot of the size and structure of our construction projects. Our local ratepayers invest their dollars in water quality improvements like the Guthrie plant. At the same time, that provides local jobs in the construction industry, which also moves the economy forward in, in challenging times. So we have sustainability, we have employment stability for our construction trades in this community, and we're also improving water quality, and I think that's a win for everyone.